I think we can all feel the rising tide of pushback regarding Christianity and the Bible and the gospel. And I think it's interesting to notice the attitude of the first century Christians regarding this. The Apostle Paul, in writing to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, he talks about how the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ has been shone into our hearts. And then he pictures us as a clay pot. He said, we have this treasure, the treasure of God's glory revealed in Christ in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God, not of us. And then he talks about the knocks, about the challenges, about the pushback uh, regarding the world around us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. So he's saying this. If you whack a clay pot, whatever is in the clay pot is going to come out. And because we have no strength in ourselves, we're easily knocked around by this world. But what happens is that every time they give us a good whack, out of us comes the beauty of Christ, the glory of, of God, the revelation of the gospel. That's how it ought to happen. And so Paul says this is not negative. Let the world knock Christ out of you, so to speak. In all the hard knocks of life, what should happen is that the dying of the Lord Jesus, that is us bearing with him in the opposition of the world, results in the life of the Lord Jesus being manifested in our mortal bodies. So people see Christ every time we get knocked. It's hard to believe, but more than a quarter of a century ago, a group of us went to Little Rock, Arkansas. In those days, the father of the present Governor Huckabee was governor at that time. He was very pro-Christian, but the city government itself was very anti-Christian. And I've never seen so much pushback. It would take more than one video to tell all the stories. But just a few illustrations. Some of our young people went to some of the poorest parks in the poorest neighborhoods in Little Rock to have some kids clubs for the children. And after a bit, we got a phone call. We're going to have to charge you back rent for the use of the pavilions in these parks. Oh, said Sister Heller, you know who uses those pavilions? Drug dealers and prostitutes. Do you charge them? rent for the use of those facilities. We thought the children in those neighborhoods were worth better than that. It wasn't long until the woman apologized and said that we ought to be in all the parks in Little Rock. The manager of the hotel where we were staying, a hundred paying customers in his hotel, called us in and told us he didn't want any of us talking to anybody about the Lord Jesus in the hotel. And I was astounded at this. I said, I would like to know in the history of the Holiday Inn, if any manager has told any paying customer what he can or can't talk about in his hotel. It was astounding to me. And what happened in that hotel was one of the sisters on the team was able to share the gospel with the cleaning staff. And I think about six of them professed Christ. After we left, he fired the whole crew. But they said, don't worry about us. We have better jobs and a better manager now. God is looking after us. We had made arrangements to have a noontime hymn sing and testimony time down near the river. But after a few days, they canceled us suddenly and said, sorry, there have been complaints about you making too much noise. They replaced us with a rock band. And, uh, and they told us that um, we couldn't be there anymore. 
Some of our young people stayed and when the crowd arrived for the rock band, they handed out the little life and death cards. We never had such a good response. We'll let the devil bring the crowd and we'll use that crowd. And uh, people were coming back saying, hey, my friend got one of these, I want one too. And we handed out thousands of those gospel tracks to those who were attending the rock band concert. We ended up moving to the pedestrian mall and a Christian businessman allowed us to hook up our PA system there. And a man came up to one of us, does anyone here speak Spanish? And when we introduced him to a lady who did, he explained, he said, you know, if I'm understanding what's being said here, this is the reason I came to Little Rock. He had come from Montevideo, Uruguay, all the way to Little Rock, Arkansas with his brother for a Taekwondo convention. But he realized the reason he was there was to hear the gospel. On another scene, uh, the city school board had said we could use the high school for our kids club and then refused, but uh, acquiesced and allowed us to have our evening meetings there. But the, they sent the custodian in to spy on us and to report back to them what we were doing. Two weeks later, we took him out for lunch and found out that he'd put his trust in the Lord while he was spying on us. There are lots of other stories like that. Maybe we'll have another video sometime to talk about it. But let's remember the picture here. We're clay pots and we're easily knocked around. And that's a good thing because every time we get knocked, a little bit of Christ should come out. His grace, his mercy, his forgiveness, his love. If we're filled with him, then that's what's going to come out. And that's what the world needs to see. That the dying of Jesus, the, the sufferings, the difficulties we go through, result in the life of Jesus being manifested in our mortal bodies, in our clay pots. May it be so. Don't be discouraged by the opposition. All they can do is expose the Lord Jesus in us by knocking us around. <laughs>